Welcome to episode 581 of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I am talking about haunted places in the U.S. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me uh, through the podcast page. And that is Salcedo Paranormal dot podbean dot com. That's S A L S I D O Paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord, or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of the show every night, uh, two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, right before uh, Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I'd like to thank Michael Strange host of Triple Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting my shows up there. And uh, I think that takes care of that. So if you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can uh, find books I've written over on uh, Amazon, Paranormal Fiction and Nonfiction, with uh, one uh, nonfiction one hopefully coming out in a uh, hopefully a month or two, a few months. And um, and so that's going to be uh, connected to the show. So that's going to be amazing. Uh, you can also uh, sign up to the Patreon page, where now uh, I am putting out one extra episode per week exclusively on Patreon, and that is available to all paid membership tier levels there. Uh, and, of course, you can always just make one-time donations through PayPal. Uh, support is never expected, but always appreciated, as there are expenses in making these shows, uh, from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases, and then also to uh, when it comes to making these books, uh, there are some expenses there as well. So, um, so I think that covers everything. Uh, we finished the last of the places I had for Alaska, the last one of these, of these episodes. So now we are moving on to Arizona. And the first place um, is one I've seen on TV. Uh, I used to, um, back when I watched TV a lot more, my eyes weren't bothering me as much. I uh, really got into, because I didn't know much about it, I just saw it on TV. A lot of the, um, just the, the initial, um, the initial version of Ghost Hunters, that show. And um, that was before I learned how how much the networks, how much control the networks have over sort of the content that can go up on those shows and how much they unfortunately try to exaggerate and or fake things, not even necessarily with the approval of the investigators, um, although that can happen, I think, over time too. But um, but I, I wasn't aware of any of those things at the time. So, um, And this location is actually, I've seen it on that show. Um, and that is, of course, the Birdcage Theater in uh, Tombstone, Arizona. And um, so I have a couple articles on this. Of course, the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, uh, reportedly haunted by the ghosts of uh, former patrons and uh, performers from its days as a saloon and brothel in the late 1800s. So, um, and like I said, I, I um, first saw the location on TV, so I do have some couple of just images in my mind of it. But there are pictures in these articles too, so definitely check them out. Um, this first article here is from medium.com, and the title reads Ghostly Legends of the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone. So uh, this article talks about the town itself, how it is steeped in wild west history and folklore, uh, known for uh, iconic events like the gunfight at the OK Corral, 
it's it's located in the uh, heart of the uh, the Murray Cage Theater is located in the heart of this town of Tombstone there, and uh, it uh, it was. Let me see here. So it says that it's witnessed it's more than a fair share of drama and intrigue. Today, uh, according to this article, whenever this came out, I always forget to say, say this until I'm partway through the article. Please check out the um, the, the locations online and um, make sure that your your information on whether or not you can go there and all the the, the times that it's open to the public and all that. Make sure you check on things before you just go there based on what you hear in these articles because these articles were written at a certain point in the past and uh, things can change over time. So uh, definitely don't ever recommend trespassing for all kinds of reasons and uh, just make sure you're you're allowed to go there when you go and all those things. So just a, just a note I always like to, like to mention. <clears throat> but um, so this theater is... Um, the, the location that still stands today as a monument to the past. And um, so let's see here. There's a lot of reports, of course, of paranormal activity there. So the um, the Birdcage Theater started out, it was constructed in 1881 by William Harwood and C.S. Fly. It's quite a last name. Uh, it was intended to provide entertainment for the uh, residents and visitors of Tombstone, uh, catering to basically all their all their entertainment desires. Excuse me. Had um. So the the theater got its name from the uh, twenty two private boxes that lined the balcony. Okay, so I didn't know that. Which had a um, resemblance to bird cages, and it quickly became the center of entertainment in Tombstone. So, uh, and of course, it um, there were some activities that went on there that at the time were thought then less thought to be less than reputable at the time there. Uh, so it goes into the, some of the history of what was going on there. We don't need to go too much into that because again, that goes into um, one of the, the sections here in the article is tragedy and violence. So, uh, going over the paranormal activity here at this location. Um, so just, uh, just to point that out there, it is, it was known for, uh, many, uh, many accounts of violent encounters and deaths within the, the theater there. So with some resulting in fatalities, but, um, so over the years, many people have reported uh, or have reports of activity at the theater. And uh, so it says that the lingering energy of the past seems to have left its mark on the building, which I can see that as being definitely some the cause of some residual energies. And uh, But then that may not be the, all that, that happens there. Uh, so there is a lady in white that is seen there. This is possibly one of the most common tropes that you hear about in, in paranormal activity and in, in locations that have activity in them as a lady in white. Not quite that it's every location ever, obviously, but just so many. Um, one of the most famous apparitions is that of a lady in white who has been seen wandering around the theater. And she's often described as beautiful, uh, a beautiful ethereal figure, thought to be one of the former performers at the at the, the theater there's a apparition also of a cowboy sp uh, spirit that is said to um, be seen in the poker room he's often seen there uh, basically sitting at the at the card table uh, one of the card tables there or uh, standing at the bar uh, also there have, have been the sounds of music and laughter that have been heard uh, from staff and visitors. Um, and that goes goes to um, piano music, laughter, and even conversation when the building is empty. And these sounds are attributed to the spirits of um, people that were there before. Of course, that could also be residual energy as well. 
Um, and then also disembodied voices and whispers have, have been heard there as well and also recorded on audio equipment during uh, paranormal investigations. Uh, and that has added to the theater's um, reputation as being haunted there. So uh, there have been other apparitions there of uh, people just wearing clothing from, uh, from the late 1800s. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Talks about explanations and skepticism. Um, but uh, that's kind of a short section there. It says paranormal investigators have explored the theater and uh, at different times. And uh, some investigators have uh, produced compelling evidence while others have remained inconclusive. So uh, I think that takes care of that for that first article here. And um, okay, so the rest of this article here, there was a little more I, thought, I didn't realize. Uh, it says conclusion. The um, Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona is uh, a living relic of the Wild West and um, place that uh, a place that basically witnessed all the good and, and a lot of bad times there. Uh, the bad events of that time and the history of it combined with the countless reports of uh, paranormal activity have uh, firmly established its reputation as a haunted hotspot. So, um, and I think that covers that for that article there. So that's the first one. And I have one more here. This is from uh, foreveraz.com. So basically forever Arizona. <laughs> And the title is Haunted History of the Birdcage Theater in Tombstone, Arizona. Uh, so let me see here. So this is uh, starts out talking about the location as being one of the most infamous and legendary landmarks in the Wild West. Uh, talks about how it was built in 1881. And... Um, so it was known even throughout the country just because of how many people went there. So um, this now goes into the history again. The uh, So after it was constructed, it quickly became one of the most popular venues in Tombstone. And, uh, of course, it, it mentions the, um, the, the private boxes and the way that they, those look like bird cages. I'd always wondered about that. How, where it got its name from it makes sense now in a way uh so there were um of course saloon fights um card games and burlesque performances uh and despite the reputation the theater was also a uh popular spot for respectable citizens including local politicians okay and uh, wealthy businessmen uh, that was a well-known spot for them to all visit as well. So, uh, however, it says the theater's popularity came to a sudden end in 1889 when it was closed due to a series of violent incidents. Uh, in the years that, that followed, it says the, uh, the theater fell into disrepair and uh, it was eventually abandoned and left to the elements. So, but of course, obviously that has changed since then. Uh, inside the main theater, let's see here. Um, okay, so this is going on to the paranormal activity re I reported there. Inside the theater, the, um, excuse me, the, the balcony rooms on the top floor were, were um, brothel rooms apparently. Um, but in the years after the closure, the, the theater has become known for um, sightings and sounds, of course. Uh, visitors have reported hearing strange, uh, strange noises, having uh, the lights flicker, and even the appearance of uh, apparitions on the stage. So one of the most famous ghost sightings there, it says, was that of, um, let's see here, 
a mysterious woman in a red dress. So here you have something uh, slightly different. According to local legend, the woman uh, was a former worker in the in the brothel there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, worked in the theater. Yeah, so it's the other word, so it must be in the brothel there. Worked in the theater during its days as a brothel there. So um, unfortunately, that's, that's what happens there. And she was reportedly murdered in one of the theater's private rooms. Hopefully this was a leg- just a legend, but you never know. And uh, that's why she's seen there. Another popular story associated with the theater is that of a former stagehand who um, died during a performance. And he is also said to be seen um, in the theater still and um, still helping out and making sure the shows go uh, go on, even if it's in his own time there. So um, let me see here. Talks about the tours that were available there. I don't know if those. This is only from last year, so you might, you know, but still check on the uh, current times. Uh, it says the basement of the of the Bird Cage Theater is one of the most haunted areas, um, in the in the the place, and uh, it's where it says the um, the bodies of two uh, of the workers they were found, and visitors have uh, been passed, I guess. And the visitors have a feeling of a strong sense of unease. And even a uh, woman's cries for help there. Huh, I guess people are setting off fireworks. Wonderful. Um, so sorry for that if you're hearing those. And uh, so as visitors, it says, as visitors make their way down to the basement, they are often struck by how um, dark and foreboding the space feels. So the basement's dimly lit. Um, it's filled with artifacts from the theater's past, so that could definitely um, hold some residual energy, including costumes and props that were um, that were from the many pr- pl- uh, plays that were held there, that were formed there. So um, it says that the talks more about the guide. Uh, some visitors have reported feeling a cold breeze or a sudden t- drop in temperature. Um, when they enter the basement, even on warm days, keep in mind this is Arizona, so that I'm, I'm sure that that does get pretty warm there. Um, there has even been um, some people, and this is not fun, have reported a sudden wave of dizziness or nausea as if they were uh, being affected by malevolent, malevolent presences there. But uh, uh, one of the most chilling parts of the basement, says, is the small room where uh, the bodies were found. But uh, so let me see here. So, yeah, that's basically it for that article here. I'm thinking this is going down a little more. Um, Of course, paranormal investigators have been there before. And um, so I imagine they probably still do go there. Talks a little about about the most um, commonly commonly used tools there. Uh, so it's going into a little bit about paranormal investigation and um, EMF uh, meters there that measure the electromagnetic field, their fluctuations in those fields. And uh, so let's see here. Just scrolling past, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna do it for that location and. Uh, so yeah, so that's um, that's all I have for that location. I think we have about, we have about five minutes left, but I don't want to really want to get into another location here. So let me check out the uh, the chat. And uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a weird weird um place. All these places. And uh, yes, looking forward to um the rest of the shows that we record tonight. In a couple episodes for those of you that listen to the um. The podcast or YouTube feeds, you'll be hearing an episode, uh, two episodes from now, uh, with a special guest um, to talk about their paranormal experiences. So that's going to be great. Looking forward to that. And uh, so, yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, And uh, yeah, so anyway, going back to the the theater there, um, I did see it on TV and it, it, it was pretty, pretty neat to see it there that way. 
Um, and uh, I do, I've talked about this, this before. I do think that those, some of the, some shows can start off um, trying to do the right thing by investigating and showing the investigations. Um, it's just hard, I think, when, when they get bigger and the TV stations, maybe that, the networks that have them on, realize they're getting bigger and they start sort of pressuring for more more things to happen for it to be more and more exciting when often with investigations you may not have anything uh happen or if you do it may not be nearly as dramatic as it shows up in the tv shows um but still i've heard a lot of people say that those tv shows are what got people uh, got people interested in all things paranormal so it's sort of a double-edged sword there when it comes to the the, um, the reality paranormal investigation shows. I don't really, um, I don't watch those anymore now. I prefer to find the ones that talk about people's experiences and just have that and then maybe some recreations. Um, but uh, but that's just my own personal preference there. And uh, so, yeah, I still do try to find different kinds of shows when I can on the topics and so I've definitely heard about the Birdcage Theater through all those shows. Um, I'd, I'd like to visit there someday um, just because I have seen it. There are certain places. Um, that's probably one of them. I mean, others, my gosh, there's so many other places I'd like to visit. Waverly Hills Sanitarium, um, the Stanley Hotel, um, Winchester Mystery House, all these locations that... There's been so much media put out about them. I'd just like to check them out and see what kind of um, what kind of material or what kind of material, what kind of experiences I'm thinking about the show, what kind of experiences I would have there. Um, so, but yeah, and yeah, even just the history is still amazing to, to go there and just be there with all that that history going on there. Um, so. Yeah, that's um uh let me see here going to the chat here. Uh yeah, let me go to go cool to go there with all the history, just not staying there. I would stay at night, I would just not be sleeping. I would just be but I guess it's easier to do when I'm more used to that anyway. But um but yeah. DG in the chat there says, I mean the ghost having a red dress, why would uh a ghost stick to such a stereotypical uh Colors, white equals equals pure, black e equals evil. Yeah, there's that. Although, I think those are, I don't know. I I, I do agree that those colors are used for those sort of to, to indicate those things. But also, we have to keep in mind that they might not be a sign of those things. Um, but because people can just wear, just wear things because they sort of fit their what they what their colors they like and everything um but but yeah so i don't know about you know i think that can there can be all those things going on at the same time um but but yeah it's um and yeah there's been yeah it's, so it's looking at uh yeah let me see here yep um looking at the chat here there was uh yeah skinwalker ranch is one of those i don't know if i want to go there that place is one of those. But anyway, I'm uh, at time now, so that happened fast. Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.